And switching to, to another attractive area, transport, um, where do you see that uh, being developed in terms of pricing mechanisms to try and, sure, yeah. and, and push that? Well, when we, when Lisa Ryan was with us uh, in CORE, she developed um, a model basically for recalibrating the uh, VRT, the vehicle registration tax, and mm -hmm. the annual tax to mm -hmm. base it on CO2 emissions rather than engine size, which was the model here before. Mm -hmm. um, and we made those proposals to finance a few years ago now. Um, Subsequently, and we're not certain that we were <laughs> the cause of this, but in any event, uh, the decision was made to, right. to recalibrate. And the initial um, response was quite dramatic, actually, mm -hmm. because um, the share of the new cars, it only applies to new cars, but the share of the new car fleet, that was kind of in the AB emissions, in other words, their lower, lowest mm -hmm. emissions mm -hmm. kind of went from 30% to 70 to 80%, you know, it was very, very dramatic. Mm -hmm. um, and the, it, the recalibration applied both to the VRT and to the uh, annual tax. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's quite dramatic. And subsequently, of course, mm -hmm. uh, from the 1st of January, we introduced a um, carbon tax, mm -hmm. which adds, you know, three to five cents a litre. Um, and that, those two uh, incentives, uh, I think, have tremendous potential to, to shape the, mm -hmm. both the composition mm -hmm. of the car fleet mm -hmm. over time. You know, if you kind of roll forward five years for a lot of the cars. In the meantime, of course, we mm -hmm. brought in the kind of um, clunker incentive, you know, to take mm -hmm. out 10 year old cars. Um, so I think the, the, the carbon performance of the, uh, of the new car fleet is dramatically improved. Uh, so that's quite, that's very significant actually. Are, are you optimistic that will hold uh, if, if, the, if the economy starts to rev up again? Because I certainly know in, in, in the States in the early 70s where the oil crisis hit and the cafe standards were incorporated, sure. so it was higher efficiency, and people were buying smaller cars and then of course Ten years later, they're buying Hummers and SUVs yeah, of course, yeah, because yeah. Are, are, are you optimistic we can hold that line? On, uh, that will it be? depends on policy, really. Uh -huh. I mean, the U.S. Um, outcome happened for mm -hmm. two reasons. First of all, oil prices fell mm -hmm. quite sharply, and then they stabilized. So, really, from '86 until. Um, for about 14 years, really, mm -hmm. uh, you basically had stable or declining oil prices. And cheaper in the United States. Um, and cheaper in the U.S. because mm -hmm. there's no, or no significant tax. At the same time, incomes were growing. Right. So when you combine income, <clears throat> the second reason the U.S. you know had major problems was, of course, that the definition of car mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. cunningly structured so that SUVs and Hummers and so on weren't defined as cars. Mm -hmm. Um, so you kind of got a two-track policy, basically, mm -hmm. which, you know, as an economist highlights the difficulty with regulation, because mm -hmm. people always find a way around right. regulation. So yeah. I mean, as an economist, I just, the three most important things are price, price, and price. <laughs> and if those are right, most of the rest uh -huh. will happen. Uh -huh. um, so, but on, of course, as the economy grows and as people's incomes grow, mm -hmm. uh, we need to keep sharpening that policy. We probably mm -hmm. do need to keep increasing uh, fuel prices. Mm -hmm. We need to... Now, the way the oil market especially is going, that's likely to happen. Any, you know, anybody who's smart and looking ahead, mm -hmm. uh, even with rising incomes, will say, I really should get myself an efficient car. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, basically, they should suffer the consequences. Really, mm -hmm. you know, so it is stupid, basically. <laughs> and there are stupid to go around, and it uh, <laughs> should be what happens yeah. to them, basically. Yeah. Um, so now, I, I, the rural community, I think, have a particular problem in Ireland because they, they're they seeing some of their costs going up in terms of um, fuel for machinery, for example. Yeah. And obviously, they also have to. Uh, 
travel much more by road and so on. Yeah. So I think there is, a, and CORE has advocated this, uh, much more, we should put much more effort into and ring fence some of the um, carbon tax income to try to provide uh, much, much better uh, options for people in rural areas. Now, let's, let's go back to maybe perhaps the last, the, the most intractable thing, water, um, and what to do with that. And I, I've always struck that, that in the past, I was trying to think of successful, some of these are not pricing mechanisms, but ways in which we've um, uh, changed behavior. Uh, certainly the uh, banning the, the soft coal uh, was a regulatory, not a pricing, I suppose, a yes, regulatory. Sure, yeah. We said, You're not, that's too dangerous, you, we're not going to let you burn yes, it. Yeah. Uh, like leaded, leaded gasoline, it's just dangerous. Yeah, exactly, we're not gonna, yeah. But then the plastic bag was, has been hugely successful. It was sure, over 90% yeah. uh, change in behavior. Yes. Um, and, and some of the road charges, as you mentioned, have been successful. But the water rate seems to be evoking a whole lot of resistance. Do you think that that's going to be useful and, and successful in terms of charging for water? Well, I suppose there are two separate questions there. The, I mean, I'm convinced that it's absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. I mean, the costs of not charging ourselves for water based on the volume we use are just huge, you know. So people kind of assume we can go on like we have been. Mm -hmm. uh, and the answer to that is we can. If you want to avoid water rationing, if you want to have water of quality that you can drink, then we have to introduce pricing, it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. If we want to cope with the swings, you know, all the modeling shows that we'll have more intense weather events, which means more droughts and more rain mm -hmm. in, in different patches of the year and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have that situation, you need a pricing mechanism to manage it. So that, say we get three or four months of drought, which seems unlikely from where we're at this minute, but is mm -hmm. likely, I think, over the next 20 years or so. Uh, the reservoirs run down in less than a month, <coughs> mm -hmm. basically. Um, so to cope with that, if you increase pricing sharply so that you still get a small amount of water free, but it rises dramatically, you know, you can cut your consumption quite dramatically, mm -hmm. very quickly. Um, the current model is totally unfair because people who use water prodigally mm -hmm. essentially are subsidized by people who use it parsimoniously. Mm -hmm. um, so for several reasons, I think it's, uh, it's really essential. And I must say, I think everybody should support the political system in trying to introduce this, because if we don't, mm -hmm. the outlook is disaster. You know, because the funding channels you know, to provide the investments we need to supply, but also to maintain the systems. You know, water, it costs about half a billion a year to manage the system to give us clean water. Uh, if money is short, what do you do? You mm -hmm. come back on that, basically. You know, the shifts become, you, get, you know, you get all kinds of um, gaming by local authorities and other people, basically, mm -hmm. to save. Uh, and eventually something goes wrong and you get a mess. Mm -hmm. And then we get a mass hysteria. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fundamentally immature, I think, for people to start shrieking about water quality and supply at the same time as they're shrieking about not paying for it, basically. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think it's a big issue, but you're right, it's a big political challenge, yeah. and there will be a lot of uh, people and interests trying to prevent this happening. But it's, uh, it's really, it's, it'll be a defining moment, uh, whether we grasp that or not. If we don't, then we're at huge problems. And I think that's a perfect note, and I want everybody to listen to Frank and join the support for those water charges. And I appreciate your speaking with us today, Frank. You're very welcome. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank